Finnick on the Fox, wrapping up the workforce. It's time to go home. Hey, this is Joel Hoekstra of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. It's 5 o'clock, and it's time to go home. WRSR Owasso, Flint's Classic Rock Authority. Get up and buy Put your work away and kiss your boss goodbye. Time to punch out with an attitude. This calls for a sexy party. Jeremy Fennick, the punch out party on 103.9 The Fox. Lens Classic Rock Authority, 103.9 The Fox. Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And as a matter of fact, on the phone, lead guitarist for Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Mr. Joel Hoekstra, how are you, sir? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. You've been a member since uh, 2010. But I'm looking here at uh, your resume, your portfolio, if you will. Uh, quite a full feat at that. Uh, man, this is pretty impressive. You play with a lot of really cool people. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, I've been at it a while and, and just try and, you know, stay productive every day. And it's amazing where life takes you sometimes. Now, here's my question. Uh, you've got, like, D. Snyder here, Night Ranger, White Snake Foreigner. All very, very cool uh in their own right, but what is it about Trans-Siberian Orchestra that makes it different? Uh, well, there's a lot about it that makes it different. It's a really unique show. Uh, you know, I I don't even know where to begin. I mean, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, the production is just massive. It's a, a jaw-dropping spectacle for sure. Uh, the stage is literally the width of the arena. There's an amazing laser light show and pyrotechnic show with vid a video screen behind, you know, basically the, the width of the arena as well. Um, the performers are out on lifts over the audience in the back of the arena. We're, you know, running down the aisles playing right up next to you. And so all that stuff is really different than a normal band. Um, you know, there's an open signing line after every evening show, so we really feel like, you know, we've, we've cultivated a tradition here. We've got not only have people coming back every year, but we feel like we know a lot of these people. And uh, it's, good. it's nice for all ages to come to. Um, you know, this is a great year for those that haven't checked it out. It's a, basically a greatest hits or a, a best of show uh, it's called The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. Uh, so, you know, like I said, there's a lot of unique things about it compared to a, 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 you know, a normal rock band. Now, the Winter Tour 2017 presented by the Hallmark Channel. And uh, your, your live shows, I mean, they are a spectacle. I, I mean, that might not even be, that's an understatement to say the least. Uh, it's been called a mix of The Who's, uh, Tommy, Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, meets Pink Floyd. Now, it all was the vision of the, the late, great Paul O'Neill. And I know that that's just got to be a, a tragic loss. Uh, what is it now that, that you guys are doing to kind of keep that uh, tradition alive? Uh, well, yeah, obviously losing Paul is a, a tragic thing. We all loved him so much. And, you know, he's a wonderful guy, one of the most generous guys you'd ever meet in your life. And, you know, from a band perspective, a musician perspective, he believed in all of us so much. And that's the main thing we'll miss. But, you know, he'd already expressed what he wanted the show to be this year artistically. So you're basically going to be seeing his vision up on stage and you're going to be hearing uh, your, you know, us pay tribute to him. Uh, we want to keep the bar right where he put it, and in terms of our philosophy and production, that's just not going to change. We're just going to try and do bigger and better every year, so uh, we're always looking for the next step. Now, you're, you're based in New York, uh, but you're, you're a native of Chicago, and of course here in Flint, you know, we're kind of right in the middle. Uh, what do you like most? What's unique about each city? Obviously huge cities, but uh, they've, they've got their own unique charm. Uh, well, you know, I tour a lot, and I just find, you know, you take everything at, at face value. It's what you make of it, right? So, I mean, you can have, two people can have completely different experiences in those cities, right? So, it's 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 all about just trying to find out what's best about where you live and make the most of that, you know? I, I, I certainly love coming home to New York City and the energy of it, and I love Chicago, great sports town. Um, yeah, I definitely miss a lot of elements of that, but, you know, I also love small towns when I'm, at, you know, playing a gig in whatever, in Iowa somewhere, and I'm up early, and I'll walk around <laughs> with my coffee, and it's nice and quiet, and there's no noise on the street, and I mean, I, mean, I love that, you know, it's amazing. So you, you just kind of have to find the good experiences everywhere you go. A couple of shows, Trans-Siberian Orchestra at Little Caesars Arena coming up December 23rd. And we've got more with Joel Hoekstra, lead guitarist from Trans-Siberian Orchestra, coming up on the Punch-Out Party from 103.9 The Fox. Hey, want to roll one? Uh, no, no, not that. <laughs> well, if you've got your card, there you go. It's the right up your alley, Fox Tough Bowling League at Colonial Lanes in Flushing. <laughs> Flint's Classic Rock Authority, 103.9 The Fox. Heart Magic Man had a chance to speak with Ann Wilson of Heart 
Uh, you can get that interview at uh, my website, jeremyfennec.com, or at classicfox.com. In the meantime, today my guest, Joel Hoekstra of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and in the world of today, with so much chaos and so much uh, division, one thing I really like about TSO is the positive message. Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, like Paul Paul was really, uh, you know, a very generous man, and, and so not only are we kind of getting to live our rock star dreams up on, on stage and play for thousands of people, but we're also, uh, you know, a portion of each ticket goes to local charities, and that's something we're really proud of over the years. I think there's been $14 million allocated to local charities as we, we pass through. So you, you feel like you're doing something good, too, not just, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, living, living, living the glory life of a rock star. You know, it, it's it's nice, I, and I, I like the the, the family experience uh, element that you get out of TSO, where you're sometimes inspiring kids to play instruments or or to get better at their instruments. And so, I, there's a lot to like about it. So, with over 100 dates uh, with Trans Siberian Orchestra in in 61 different cities, how full is your schedule outside of that? It's full. I mean, you know, <laughs> I I play with White Snake, so this year I've been recording a new album with them and since we weren't touring I reached out to some friends to see what was available um, and I ended up playing for Cher all year so I was cool. kind of playing re residencies in Vegas with her and also in uh, National Harbor which is the Washington D.C. area so I had a great time doing that and but, you know you, I did a whole lot of stuff this year uh, it was a very interesting year I did some time in, uh, doing guitar clinics in Brazil uh, counseled at Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, taught at Musicians Institute in, in Hollywood. I mean, you know, you name it, man. It's uh, It's been a really interesting, <laughs> fun year. Uh, and, and three solo albums under your belt. That's got to be really nice to be able to have that creative freedom uh, to have not just one, but three solo albums, man. That's great. Yeah, thanks so much. I did that and, and also have a, a side project that uh, put out its first album a couple of years ago um, that has my name in it as well, the title Joel Hooksters 13. So. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've been working hard, man. You you stay productive, and you and you try and make a good impression, and you see where these things lead you. Now, speaking of that, uh, player for the the Broadway show Rock of Ages. What's the difference between performing for a Broadway audience and like a concert setting? What's the difference? Well, I, I think you know, in in terms of like Rock of Ages, it's that there's not as much weight on your performance. You're kind of in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, you're, you're, well, number one, you're doing eight shows a week as opposed to, say, with Whitesnake, it's probably four. Um, and there's a whole cast in front of you, you know, doing a whole show. So you're just a smaller part of it, you know. And I, honestly, I like the band thing much more because you're obviously, you know, there's more weight on you when you're one of four or five people and you're uh, edge, having to entertain the crowd on your own. So. Uh, you know, the real deal is still better for me, but it was really great to play Rock of Ages. That was a real godsend for me. I had a, I had a great time doing it, playing, you know, uh, music that I liked with guys that I liked for, you know, six years, eight shows a week. So it was a, it was a financial uh, reality changer for me, too, because I, I could take off whenever I wanted to tour, and that was a real blessing. So I didn't have to give up any of my other jobs. It was just that the day I was home, I had a job. That is awesome. That is so cool. So with touring so much, what's the hardest thing about that uh, man, I don't know I like it all I, I sometimes I mean the workload can be a bit much you know there's times where you're tired and things like that but honestly aren't isn't everybody at their job oh, I don't sure. know why musicians are any you know expect to be any different so um, you know sometimes sometimes we're tired from travel or something like that but whatever it's it's really not that big a deal I I, I love it I love everything about the whole the road and um, getting out there and touring. Well, that being said, what's the coolest thing about being on the road so much? Oh man, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> now that now that's that's going to be everything, right? My my answer is going to be everything. No, I don't like I like all of it, man. I really do. I like the you know the hang on the bus uh, when you wake up with everybody and you know talk about the day. You know, I like you know working on the music end of things. I love the performance, of course, being out in front of the audience and afterwards you know laughing about things that happened or talking about it with the band and it, the whole thing's great my guest today joe hoekstra lead guitarist for trans-siberian orchestra a couple of stops at little caesar's arena saturday december 23rd shows at three o'clock and eight o'clock and uh, i'm looking forward to it i'm not gonna lie more with joel coming up on the punch out party it's like a contact buzz for your ride home just bob and the punch out party on 103.9 the fox oh,
Flint's Classic Rock Authority, 103.9 The Fox. My guest today, Joel Hoekstra, not only plays with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, but that group right there, White Snake, Here I Go Again. So, Joel, now let me ask you this. In addition to touring, you're also making appearances on TV, film, and on stage. What do you like the least, being on TV, film, or on stage? What's, what's the hardest thing, I guess? Oh, man, I don't know. I, you know, I don't discriminate. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity gig guy. I mean, I'll take whatever I can get. So, you know, the six years with Rock of Ages was hard and the repetition end of things and the eight shows a week. Um, you know, I, again, now you, I, I was able to make an appearance in the movie, but, you know, the movie was rewritten and not as strong as the stage show, in my opinion. And, and I only had a little cameo. It was me just singing a little bit, you know, for right. like in a, in a scene. So uh, it, it wasn't as effective in terms of what it was going to you know, do for my career or anything like that. But I had a great time doing it. And, um, you know, the television appearances that we made or that I've made with other things, you know, they all are what they are. It all adds up somehow in the end to just kind of, you know, mold a career. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, does it ever get old? Like, does, you know, here I go again. Does playing here I go again ever get old? Not for me. I personally, I feel blessed to be doing it any time, right? So, right. I mean... There's people who go in and sit at the same desk every day and do fair, you know, almost the same job every day. So, I mean, I, I think about it from that perspective, and I go, man, I'm, I mean, I'm blessed. You know, I'm stepping out on stage with my friends and, and playing music that I enjoy for huge audiences and seeing the world and getting paid to do it. And There's not much to complain about in my job, you know. I, I, I can't buy into the diva rock star thing of people complaining about having the perfect life. So instead of like, ah, oh, here. Here I go again. You're more like, here I go again. That's good. That's really cool. All right, hey, good. man, come on. It's a great, it's a great song. I love I it. Mean, I mean, you it. know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm totally happy to get out. My, my answer with all those favorites is always, you know, it's hard for me to say because right. that's not where my mindset is, you know. Uh, my mindset is always in doing the best job I can for everybody and, and making other people happy, not just myself. I'm not there just to make myself happy. I'm there to make the audience happy and the people who hired me on the gig make them happy you know like with white snake i want to make david coverdell happy and have him be glad that i'm there playing guitar and, and with tso I, I want you know i want management to be happy and, and the music directors and you know i want everybody to be glad that i'm there i love that i love that attitude man joel i wish i had a whole lot more time with you but i do have a fun contest if you've got a minute would you like to play of course man Okay, so uh, being from Chicago and New York, before we play the legendary 420 contest, I have to ask you, what's your favorite kind of pizza? Oh, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, the, the ones that I liked in Chicago ended up becoming chains, and they some of them locations were not as good as others. But I would say either Home Run Inn or Connie's at certain locations. Okay. Um, so, but those are not, or Aurelio's. Um, now in New York, there are Rays. There's a Rays near us that I love. Um, but I, I've got to go with Chicago pizza. Chicago so. over New York? Yes. <laughs> there you go. See, and then for those in New York, that blows. But then again, it is the Windy City. What do you do? What time is it? 420. Do you think that smoking drugs is cool? It's just Bob's 420 contest. So it's time for the 420 contest. Here's how it works. Uh, I need you to name four of your favorite pizza toppings in 20 seconds. Go. Oh, uh, Pepperoni, One. sausage, bacon, and jalapenos. You're a winner! I'm going to set you up with a Chicago pizza with all those toppings on it. Oh, that'd be amazing. I'll have a heart attack, I think, after I eat one of those. But thank you. Joel, many, many congratulations on a very, very awesome career. I could probably spend hours just talking to you. Uh, this is just amazing. Have a fantastic tour. I'll see you on December 23rd. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. East Finnick on the Fox.